When you think of India, you don't instantly think of football. For the second most populated country in the world with a population of 1.3 billion, their national team hovers at around about 100th in the FIFA rankings, and it's a bit of a football enigma. But scratch below the surface and you'll find Kerala, the real home of Indian football. The British brought football to Kerala and the British officers played cricket with the, the royal family members, not with the common man. For the common people, they cannot play cricket because they are not the members of the royal family. So they took football into their hearts. Even disabled people play football in Northern Kerala. Even blind people come to the ground to hear and experience the thrill of the football. It all starts with Kerala Sevens, a seven-a-side local tournament played largely by local amateurs. On dirt pitches in a league of over 50 teams that play each other throughout the year with some exceptional talent and jaw-dropping highlights. Sevens kept the football interest alive, alive in Kerala society. It's like a celebration, it's like a festival, a festival of football. The geographical structure of Kerala is like that, there's no much place here. So it's more easy to play sevens or fives uh, rather than playing in elevens. And the best thing for sevens is like it's not played in the ground or in the stadium. It's played in paddy goods. Even if they get the chance to see a 11 side match, they prefer sevens more. They have the ownership feeling. The local boys playing, the local guys organizing the match. The local guys constructing the wooden stadium. Uh, if you watch the seventh game, seventh more, it's more about the skills. It's about how you do it in style. The, the games are played to entertain the fans. If you want further evidence of the passion for football that captivates these communities, look no further than the World Cup. India have never qualified for the World Cup finals, but this doesn't stop football fever taking over. In a single line, I would say. Uh, the adrenaline level of Kerala soars high during the World Cup. We used to read, read and read in newspapers about World Cup. About Johan Krayer for Kaiser Beckenbauer, everybody. But in 1986, we experienced the World Cup. 86 World Cup. Siko, Socrates and other guys, they played well. But they lost in penalties. They lost in shootout. So, that defeat created a lot of sympathy and love towards Brazil. While it was happening in Brazil or Russia or in Mexico, but we start to form the organization, uh, organizing committee. Sometimes Neymar's cutout will be here, then other side it will be Messi. Just like political parties open an office, they will Brazil office here, Argentina office on the next junction. And sometimes these both the office, Argentina office and Brazil office will be face to face. They start quarreling. The uh, priest of the local parish or the pujari of the temple, they come sometimes to pacify the people. Please don't clash with each other. World Cup will come and go and you will remain the same. But people will say, no, 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 till July 24, I will kill him. <laughs> they don't consider that Brazil or Argentina is from another continent. They think that either Brazil or Argentina is an extension of Kerala or Kerala is an extension of Brazil or Argentina. Despite this, it took a long time for professional football to be established in Kerala. Surprising, the man behind this is India's most famous athlete, cricket legend Sachin Tendulkar, who founded the Kerala Blasters, a pioneer club of the Indian Super League founded in 2014. Since its formation, they've attracted the likes of Wes Brown, David James and Dimitar Berbatov. In terms of supporters, the Blasters average 55,000 fans per game and boast the highest average attendance for every season they've played. The emergence of Kerala Blasters was refreshing. It's so simple. That Kerala's have a club to support. In my childhood, you cannot find any ladies near the grounds, football grounds. But this Kerala Blasters and the ISL changed that. Now, families started to come to the stadium to watch Kerala Blasters match. The Manjapada fan group, or the Yellow Army, are the largest and most active fan group for the Kerala Blasters. Most notably, the Yellow Army caught the world's attention in 2016 when trolling Marco Matarazzi, who was coaching rivals Chennaiin. Following a string of events, the fans attended a game wearing thousands of Zidane masks. So why people go in search of new uh, European clubs or Argentina, Brazil is because they don't see anything in, in their own state. Once they uh, 
get a club in state. So everyone started to support Kerala Blasters. Um, Manyapada had a huge role in unifying all these fans because the way we administered the things, the way we coordinated activities had helped all the fans come under one umbrella. We started uh, district-wise, then slowly we started the city-wise, uh, that is out of uh, Kerala, city-wise, and we started abroad as well. At present, we have members in 44 countries. But for us, uh, the important thing is, see, giving back something to the society and uh, we had given a lot uh, you know uh, during the floods when we unfold the flood strip it is like an something uh, we felt satisfied because as a fans group we have done something to the society which is our responsibility whilst internationally india continue to struggle the future of football at least in kerala seems brighter than ever